What's going on in your algebras? In this video, I want to illustrate uh, an example uh, explaining uh, why it's generally not true that matrix transformations are uh, commutative, or at least the composition. Okay, you may remember from back in the day, uh, it isn't always true that f of g of x is equal to g of f of x. Okay, this is generally not the case. Doesn't mean it'll always be the case, but um, when it comes to compositions, whether it be with functions or matrix transformations, um, a lot of the times uh, the order in which you perform the composition will create different standard matrices, much like the order in which you uh, do the composition with regular functions creates different functions. All right, so in general, composition of matrix transformations is not commutative. Now, I'm not surely, uh, not really sure what happened here um, when I was preparing the notes in the software, but some of the problem got chopped off. <laughs> so I guess that means we don't have to do it, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> it should say, let T sub A be the reflection across y equals x. Um, realistically in the notes it says let t sub a be the reflection across the line y equals x and then uh, it says let t sub b uh, be the orthogonal projection projection uh, onto the x-axis. <laughs> So sorry about the uh, hack job here with the instructions, but hopefully I've included enough to where uh, you get the point as to what these transformations are supposed to do. Um, they're giving us a specific vector x in this example, and they want us to apply the composition of these two matrix transformations in two different ways. Um, and, and seeing how it affects the vector x. All right, so let's start with example A. We have t sub b of t sub a of x. Again, you want to kind of think backwards. The first transformation to be used is actually t sub a, and then whatever vector you get out of that will be plugged into t sub b. Alternatively, you could write this as capital T sub b of capital T sub a of x. And ultimately, it boils down to this multiplication, the standard matrix for T sub B times the standard matrix for T sub A times the vector X. Now the standard matrix for B. Okay, remember we have to do the orthogonal projection onto the X axis. That matrix looks like this. And then uh, T sub A's standard matrix should represent the reflection across Y equals X. That's 0, 1, 1, 0. And then we also have the input vector X with components or entries 3 and 2. So you can do this calculation in a couple of ways. You could first multiply the input vector X by the matrix A and then multiply that result to the matrix B or alternatively we can multiply these two together and then multiply it to the matrix X which I think that's the route that I want to take multiplying uh, the matrix B to A will give you the following entries we'll have 0 then 1 in the top row, then 0 and 0 in the bottom row. What's neat about these standard matrices when you multiply them together and then apply the matrix to the uh, input vector is that um, the product of these two matrices actually take care of both transformations in one fell swoop. Alright, so this standard matrix that's in orange 
does the two things at the same time, the um, projection and the reflection. Uh, well, the uh, reflection first and then the projection. Anyway, the resulting vector here is going to be 2, 0. Of course, you could write this in comma delimited form, 2 comma 0. Let's go ahead and work out part B, and then we'll do like a geometric argument, uh, seeing why the uh, reverse composition is a little bit different, or has a little bit of a different effect than what the original one does. Okay, so we're working on part B now. This can be rewritten as capital T sub A, capital T sub B of X. This boils down to ABX. From the last part, here's the matrix A. Here's the matrix B, and here's X. Again, you have a couple of routes you can take. You can first multiply the, make, uh, the vector X to the matrix B. Okay, that would be um, a projection uh, output vector, and then you could take that output vector and treat it as an input vector for the uh, transformation T sub A. Um, or alternatively, which is the route I tend to gravitate towards. You can multiply the two standard matrices out. Okay, the top row should be 0 and 0. Bottom row is going to be 1, 0. And that's that matrix right there will take care of both transformations um, all at once. Multiply that standard matrix to our vector x. We're going to get 0, 3. and in comma delimited format parentheses 0 comma 3 so towards the bottom of this page we uh, have a couple coordinate planes <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is draw the vector X in each of these uh, to do that uh, you'll note that the uh, ordered pair is 3 comma 2 so you'll plot the point 3 comma 2 and then to draw the vector uh, you're gonna start at the origin and just draw an arrow to that point 3 comma 2 and that would be the vector X so this is a coordinate plane that um, corresponds to part A and remember part A's problem was to do T sub A, I'm sorry, T sub B. Of T sub A. Of X. So again, thinking backwards, the first transformation that takes place is T sub A. And T sub A is a reflection across the line Y equals X. Um, well, do recall that the ordered pair for this vector is 3 comma 2 and in order to reflect a point across the line y equals x you just switch the x and y coordinates so 3 comma 2 is going to turn into 2 comma 3 so let's plot the point 2 comma 3 and we'll draw a vector starting at the origin and ending at 2 comma 3 and this would represent capital T sub A of x what we then have to do is take that vector which has um, components 2 comma 3 now and apply the second transformation which is a projection onto the x-axis so to do that you can think about taking this point 2 3 and just dropping it down so that it lies right on top of the x-axis and then to finish the vector you can start at the origin and just connect it to that point right there which is 2 comma 0 and this vector represents capital T sub B of capital T sub A of X so that's what our vector X turns into after both transformations are applied in that order 
Let's go ahead and see what happens with the reverse order. We'll plot 3 comma 2 again. We'll connect it with the origin to create the vector x. And in this problem, part b, we do the reverse composition, capital T sub a, capital T sub b of x. So again, thinking backwards, the first transformation to take place is capital T sub b, which is an orthogonal projection onto the x-axis. So we're going to take this point right here and basically body slam it down onto the x-axis. That's at 3 comma 0 right now, and this is what the vector would look like. And that vector corresponds to T sub b of x. What we do next is we apply T sub a, which is the reflection across the line y equals x, which means that we're just going to switch the x and y coordinates of 3 comma 0 to get 0 comma 3. We'll connect it with the origin. And that right there would represent the vector capital T sub A of capital T sub B of X. This is visual evidence that the matrix uh, compositions do not commute. If they did, then we should end up with the same vector in each diagram, but we don't. Okay? And you may have even uh, caught that fact earlier in the problem that the um, matrix transformations, uh, the composition of them doesn't commute because if you look at the standard matrices that are formed and associated with the composition uh, problems, the first standard matrix has 0, 1 in row 1 and 0, 0 in row 2, whereas the second standard matrix has different entries. So when these standard matrices are not equal to each other, that right there is proof enough that the uh, compositions do not commute. Okay? And down below we have the visual evidence of that. Alright, and that's where this video ends. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.